Tell me, what is this to you? Like, what does this place mean to you? Hello, Saints. My name is Jeff. I'm a pastor exploring everything I can about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is a little bit difficult to do by myself just outside of St. Louis. So I'm going to go to Utah, meet with my Latter-day Saint friend, David Snell from Saints Unscripted. He's going to show me a thing or two. Let's go. All right. I figured the um, best place to meet would be at a, uh, a Utah institution, Smith's Grocery Store. Wait, is this him? Um, thanks for doing this, man. Of course. Um, one of the reasons I'm pumped is because I forgot what we're doing. So I know we're, <laughs> I know we're driving around to awesome Latter-day Saint spots yeah. in the valley. That's about it. Tied to history? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I didn't forget. All right, so tell me, why are these important to you as a Latter-day Saint, these destinations? So, uh, it's, it's, it's my heritage. Yeah. I guess you could say. I brought with me, actually, this is partially answering this question. So passed down in my family has been this four volume set of books called The History of Utah by Orson F. Whitney, who was one of the early pioneers. Inside one of those books, I found this old map Oh, that was inside the books that were it passed down? Yes, it was oh, inside I didn't know the that. books. Wow. A map of the plots of land that the first pioneers owned. Some of them, at least one of them, is one of my ancestors. So it's kind of fun to retrace their steps it, and their lives. It's their bit. world. It's their world. Without these people just here on this map, yeah. like, this wouldn't be here. You're right. A lot of people have, have a life here. So we're gonna look back and, and learn a little bit more about those people that made it all happen. So I don't know if you can see those grain towers out there. Yeah. Uh, that is Welfare Square. That's kind of one of the centers of humanitarian aid for the church. Is it true that there's a mountain full of seeds from all over the world in case we need to... You know... <laughs> Probably referring to Granite Mountain Records Falls. Oh, Granite Mountain, that's it, yes. I wouldn't be surprised if they had past presidents of the church on ice back there, but... <laughs> Can we add that to one of our destinations? Today? <laughs> no. Can we get into the Granite Mountain? So our first destination is the Capitol Building. The Capitol Building cool. for the story of what used to be here. Okay, so we're on Capitol Hill. In the 1870s, 1876, this was known as Arsenal Hill. They had like 45 tons of explosives here. Uh, and they kept it somewhat far away from the city for okay. obvious reasons. Yeah. The city is just down the hill from us. What happened on April 5th, 1876, is uh, something ignited mm. in the arsenal and it exploded. Oh. 500 tons of material, rock and whatnot, rains down on Salt Lake City. Oh. 20 miles away, people feel the shockwave. People think it's the end of the world. Oh people, my goodness. People are kneeling down in the streets praying. It's like fire and brimstone. Yes, yes. yes. They either think it's a war or the end of the world. Uh, just a, a bad deal. So, yeah. so fun well, stuff. Yeah. Weird history. Interesting. We're about to go under Eagle Gate. This is a replica. Uh, the Eagle used to be made of wood. It was basically the entryway to Brigham Young's property. People would have to go through there in order to get up City Creek, where they oh, okay. could get wood and stuff for their homes and whatnot. Gotcha. So this is the place. We're at, this is the place, Heritage Park. There's a legend, there's a lore around this. Area. Oh no, it's real. Is it? it well, okay. okay, he didn't actually say this is the place, he said this is the right place. Okay, which actually makes more sense because they had already been here for a minute, right? So behind the camera right now is Emigration Canyon, okay. which is where the first Utah pioneers came through. They weren't the first people who had ever been here before. Sure. There were other people, Father Escalante and other, and of course there were Native Americans around. Mm -hmm. There were, there was a smaller group that came ahead a little bit, Brigham Young was six, so so he came in a, a little while afterwards, day or two afterwards, but he looked across the valley here and said, this is the right place. Initially, wasn't there thought that the saints were gonna go even further west, like maybe even California? There were some people who saw this place and were like, 
maybe we should keep going to California. <laughs> and there was a there was a saint by the name of Samuel Brandon who sailed from the eastern United States around to the western United States, landed in California, and saw California, and he came west and he was like, hey, Brigham Young, maybe we should go to California. Oh. And Brigham Young was like, uh, no, this is this is this is the place. And it wasn't horrible when they got here, but it certainly wasn't, you know, the more lush yeah. area that they were used to. It wasn't easy. East. They wanted to be left alone. They wanted to be left alone, and they didn't want to be somewhere where somebody was going to come in ten years later and say, hey, this this is our land. Yeah. We talk about making the land blossom like a rose, right? And and they really have, like, compared oh, yeah. to then and now, like, Salt Lake is a beautiful area. Do people come to this place? Do they revere it as almost sacred in some sense, or is it kind of just like a uh, historical marker. I think that for the average Latter-day Saint, it's probably more of a uh, historical marker. Okay. Uh, which is okay. There's, there's. I wouldn't say that there's like heavy spiritual significance okay. uh, to, to this place in the same way that a temple might be. Sure. But for those that are kind of interested in history, this is an important place. There is, I mean, this is actually my first time being here. Okay. With you. Regardless of whether it's it's got spiritual significance, I mean, this is, it's important. Had a different decision been made about where to settle, history would have been altered drastically. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to come down to Temple Square because I have, I've never just gone to Temple Square with a Latter-day Saint. Okay. I've been here for General Conference uh -huh. and I was with a Latter-day Saint, but it was more about just getting to the conference center. I've never just been able to like walk around and be like, all right, tell me, what is this to you? Like, what does this place mean to you? Because it's unique in American Christianity to have something like this. I guess I would compare it to when ancient Israel would camp, they would have the temple at the center and they would camp around the temple because the temple was the center of their life. Sort of the same way here, especially in, in Salt Lake City generally, you got Temple Square and all the streets emanate from that. And uh, in the same way for Latter-day Saints, personally, uh, the temple is extremely important to us. It's where we make covenants with Christ, with God, that uh, covenants that bind us to him. In, in our view. There's, th this is kind of hallowed ground yeah. for Latter-day Saints and for me personally. So it's a pleasure to be here with you, yeah. seeking to, to learn a little bit more about us, a place for me to learn about my own heritage and sure. history and faith. So it's a special place for me and yeah. for us collectively. Part of what is so fascinating to me about this area is that there's multiple layers mm. of significance, whether it's historical or religious. Sure. So yeah, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. We just found out that we could go into the tabernacle. So I'm actually really excited because I've never been in there. Let's go in. It. Let's do it. right around Temple Square. Yes. And there's more history, like everywhere. What is this house? This is a really easy house to miss. I have missed it for many years because Temple Square is right there. This is the Beehive House, and right next door to it is the Lion House. These were the homes that Brigham Young's very large family lived in. Oh. A okay. very large family, oh, believe okay. me, multiple wives, lots of children. That makes sense. And I've read a book on Brigham Young, so this is checking out. Yes. So there's a great one um, called Brigham Young at Home by, I believe, one of his daughters. I think it's Clarissa Young. It's all about what Brigham, Brigham Young was like as a father. We talk a lot about him as a president of the church, as a prophet, as uh, a politician even, as the governor of the territory. It's so fun to see him in a home setting right here. And you learn a lot about these, these homes right here. Yeah. So. So, for sure. Fun to be here. Yeah. Okay, what did you just say? Oh, I, we're about to go into Gilgal Gardens. You're going to see kind of the surprise sculpture as soon as you walk in. So, I want to make sure you're filming. Probably it's a surprise surprised. sculpture. I don't know what I'm walking Anyone into. Who knows. All right, here we go. Oh, 
I'm gonna tell you what I'm seeing. This looks like a, a Joseph Smith Sphinx. Is that right? That's exactly what it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> you don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. Okay. David, I have so many questions. My mind will be blown if you have answers. Today, we've covered like Latter-day Saint history, Temple Square, and now, where are we? We are at Gilgal Sculpture Garden. This is my first time being here as well. I've seen okay, some okay. of this stuff in pictures. It is such a pleasure to be here. Yeah. To share this moment with you. I want you to know that a lot of non-members are gonna look at this sculpture, this Joseph Smith Sphinx, and find it very weird. But to Latter-day Saints, we also find this extremely weird. We're all on the same page about that. Okay, good. My understanding is that the Sphinx is supposed to be kind of a symbol of mystery. Right. Um, and so they put Joseph Smith's face on a Sphinx to like show him like revealing mystery to the world, something like that. Okay. I don't know, okay, like okay. this is not an official sculpture of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's just something that some guy, some artist made, which I, I mean, I'm grateful that he did. Because this thing, I'm, I, I love this thing. I think it's so it's weird. Fascinating. Yeah, no, no. Weird is cool because it's good to know that there's there's a little bit of flair in there, right? This is just a hidden nugget in yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. That I was thinking, like, where could I take Jeff that he might find interesting and that viewers might find interesting? Yeah. And I was like, there's that sculpture. What was your first thought when you saw it? Honest. Honestly, thought. my first thought was, is this serious? But the fact that you were kind of like wanting to see my reaction, I was like, it probably isn't. With anything Latter-day Saint, I'm like immediately trying to understand. I'm trying to connect dots. Yeah. So I made the joke about, is this a reformed Egyptian thing? And like, aren't there some Egyptian ties to yeah. Latter-day Saint belief? Because I, I know of an individual who does like cruises up the Nile talking about the significance of the temple and how it reaches back into ancient Egypt and some of that stuff. Yeah, you've got you've got Joseph Smith, you've got uh, the Book of Abraham, and right, the, uh, right, Book of Abraham, uh, papyrus and the mummies that Joseph Smith owned. Yeah, I don't think this has anything to do with any of that. I, I think it does. I bet you. Yeah, do. <laughs> yeah I think it does. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just love seeing your brain whirring. <laughs> yeah, trying to find some kind of connection. I try yeah. not to think too hard about it. That's that's the key. You just got experience you, yeah you just experience yeah. it I'm trying to challenge you in the most simple way possible to just show you something really weird and uh, enjoy it maybe I need to walk around again <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome David. Yes, sir. This has been awesome. Thank you. Likewise. Um, I can try to go and figure out what's significant to Latter-day Saints just by, I don't know, asking around. But it's another thing to actually go with somebody who has a vested interest, like this is your heritage, this is your culture, and it, it's it's all the more impacting to me on a personal level as opposed to it just being like informational. So I appreciate you taking me around and doing this. Thank, thank you. And thank you, thank you for being respectful towards this stuff because this stuff is meaningful yeah. for me personally and yeah. for Latter-day Saints around the world. Whether you believe in the theology or the origin of the faith or not, it's history. Like sure. these people did exist. And so it's personal on so many different levels. To the outside world, we're kind of a cultural anomaly right. in right. the United States. So it's been a pleasure to to share that with you and yeah. show you around a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, I gotta do the thing because this is a YouTube channel, so make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Please check out Saints Unscripted. I would be very surprised if you haven't already because they have a very proficient output of amazing videos that are super helpful and informative about Latter-day Saint history and belief. And this guy is an amazing communicator. Check them out as well, and until next time, I'll see you later, Saints. So yeah.